Look, there's a fan on in here, and I don't know how to turn that fucking thing off. Hey, my number five is Jerry Seinfeld, the Syrian. Did you know he's Syrian? His family's from Syria. But they were listed as Turkish because the Ottomans were running Syria back in the day. Anyway, that's kind of my, like, I can make some funny observations while I do this because unlike the other top comedians in the whole world, you know, I could find at least one or two bits that I love that make me laugh. Jerry Seinfeld, I don't personally really love a lot of Jerry Seinfeld stuff. Here's the thing. Uh, so if you're getting how this works, it doesn't. it's not about who, who makes me laugh the hardest. Uh, this is about who is the best living comedian. We have the totality of the body of work, which is stunning and very impressive. You know, because he started off when he was like 20, and the guy's like 65 now. And he's still doing stand-up. Uh, not to mention the TV shows, appearances. He's always good in everything. Oh, comedians in cars getting coffee, right? What's better than that? But the thing is, uh, he's probably also underrated. There's too many people that think like Sein oh, Seinfeld. Like, you know, it's just so safe and hacked. But it's not because he's, he's another one like Cat Williams. He's a real craftsman. Seinfeld is a craftsman. And he, he does this to make people laugh. So he's not fucking around with stuff that amuses him and his fucking comedian friends in the back of the row. He's like, people pay for this. So I have to come up with things that make the people laugh to get the money's worth. Um, that's why he's better than a lot of you fucking hacks that listen to this. But here's the other thing, though. Um, hey, wait, before we do that, here's some early, early, early Seinfeld. And this is really him, and it's really his voice. Okay, so get ready, because there's a twist, though. <laughs> do you know what Custer's last words were? <laughs> Does anybody here speak Indian? <laughs> Moving right along. Why did Washington throw a dollar across the Potomac? <laughs> His horse is too big. <laughs> Do you know why a priest crosses himself? <laughs> to get to the other side. <laughs> did you hear about the rabbi who bought himself a ranch, called it the Bar Mitzvah? <laughs> For real, that's Seinfeld. Uh, but it's not his jokes. He got this gig, and I remembered him talking about this once. I guess what happened is he got on a couple episodes and his, in the show, you know, he's named, like, Fozzie or something. And he's a delivery driver uh, that shows up, and he always has a really bad joke. Yeah, the way I heard the story, uh, he shows up maybe for two... He gets he's about two or three episodes. Uh, and then he shows up one day and, uh, to read the lines. And there's no lines for his character, which doesn't appear at all. And uh, so he realizes he's been he's been let go. But I think this is actually a major turning point in Seinfeld's career because if he'd kept doing that, he surely would have become known as, you know, like just like a, a goofy hack. But instead, you know, he went on to other things. So he got himself a suit because what's funnier than a suit? You know, the top matches the, the pants. And uh, he shows up on HBO, which is a relatively new thing. He's on the Smothers Brothers which could get more credit from more comedians for how good they were. But here's, um, yeah, this does not actually go well. No, it doesn't start well. But then it tells us why he might be one of the best ever. Gives me, oh, thanks. Okay. Ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure in apologizing for this next performance. <laughs> Will you please welcome Jerry Steinfeld. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love those guys. Don't you? <laughs> nice to be here tonight. A pleasure to be here tonight. It's a beautiful night. I just got back to uh, Los Angeles today. I'm pretty excited about it. Nice weather we're having. Weather never changes here that much. You notice that's always the same. And weather reports are always the same. They always show you the same things on the weather report because they don't really know. So they try and cover it up. They show you the maps. Highs, lows, fronts. And then my favorite part, the satellite photo. This is really helpful. <laughs> A photograph of the Earth from 10,000 miles away. <laughs> I don't know. Shopping, it's a great challenge. 
Thank you. <laughs> Little stray laugh. Oof, they introduced him as Steinfeld. It doesn't go well at all. But the thing is, uh, you can watch this whole thing in its entirety. I don't know if this is going to get copyright striked. But, you know, Seinfeld actually pulls himself out of it real cool. By the end of this, he's got the whole audience laughing with a serious applause at the end. So I think this was like a little bit of a test and made it moment, you know. And I'm waiting online now. What is the thing in the post office with the wanted posters on the walls? You're standing there, you're gonna mail a package, they're showing you killers, murderers, thieves. What do they want to do about it at the post office? Write the guy? <laughs> do people rip these off the wall, go up to the counter? Yeah, give me a book of stamps and a search warrant. I'm going after this guy. <laughs> I've had it up to here with his activities. <laughs> I'll tell you my main question about these wanted posters on the wall, why didn't they hold on to this guy when they're taking his picture? <laughs> What are you down to, 1,200 now? <laughs> You're a rail, baby. <laughs> and what would he possibly say back to you? But you know I feel terrific. <laughs> Thank you very much, good night. <laughs> Yeah, the one Smothers brother tells him to take a curtsy, Jerry, and then Jerry just walks out with a kind of, you know what, fuck you, I just killed on your show. Hey, have you ever noticed that uh, people in New York, uh, they say the word online? Like he goes, I was online at the post office. I think it's only New York people do that, and everyone else would say, like, I'm in line, or... I was in the lineup. Or British people might say the queue. I was queued up. So, like, what I, w I wonder when, like, um, AOL, America Online came out. So, did, Br did New York people think, like, oh, yeah, that's why it's called America Online? Because, like, you, you, you dial up and then you, it's, it's like millions of people are all waiting, uh, waiting online to get onto the internet. I wonder where we are online. Are we like at the back of the line or are we? Anyway, I think you guys should stop doing that. I still hear some of you doing that. So just say the lineup, uh, the queue. If you want to be special, say the queue. What's he talking about? Oh, yeah, Seinfeld. So from here, he's going to show up on Johnny Carson. Again, this is back in the day when your first appearance was like a big thing. And he fucking nails it. Um, I think he even gets that famous, you know, Carson comes out, shakes his hand, brings him back to the chair, that type of thing. But anyway, he is, he, he'll appear on Carson like um, fucking three times a year for years. He'll be like a, a steady regular, um, as well as showing up on Letterman, too. Um, every time, man, the guy is just fucking solid. Uh, you, you don't have to say that's my favorite bit or anything. It's that he knows what the audience wants. He knows what those audiences are looking for. And he delivers every time. Solid stuff. Right through. Laughs every 11 seconds. Just like that. So even the interviews, he's really good. He knows exactly when to hit, you know, the funny story and then the funny part that makes people laugh. And then back and forth. So Seinfeld, man, the guy is just an absolute professional. Hey, did you ever notice uh, that the, <laughs> the hackiest bit in all of stand-up comedy is you just say anything about the Roman Catholic Church and then you, you make uh, a joke about men raping children. But uh, if you actually look those up, it's pretty interesting. Like, yeah, it's true, public schools, like Norm MacDonald's pointed out, public schools have way more, way more of these. Um, so do other organizations, football, and I would suggest the per capita, because remember the Roman Catholics are like um, fucking, uh, fucking billions of people and organizations, right? So I would have to say stand-up comedians are the, as they like to call it, uh, the kid fuckers of the world by far. They're the biggest kid fuckers and child rapists in the whole world. Um, do you know, if you look up what they call kid fuckers, 
it'll be someone that was uh, in their 20s and 30s that was an adult, and then it'll be like a 17-year-old, right? So there, there's actually almost zero pedo pedophilia ever recorded in any of those. It's always um, an, a grown man like a Jeff Ross who's dating a 15-year-old, right? Or it's a Chris D'Elia. And did, did you know Jerry Seinfeld, if you're old enough, maybe you can remember, he showed up with this really young woman. Did you know he met her? He was just walking around uh, New York Park. He's 38 years old. And he just sees a high school girl who he thinks is really hot and goes over and, like, chats her up and then starts dating her. Yeah, they dated for, like, four years. Like, that's... By the way, again, that's most all of the Catholic scandals you heard was a 38-year-old priest and a 17-year-old, right? So that's the same same thing, right? Anyway, I just wondered if anyone ever noticed that, that there's an incredible amount of kid fuckers in the stand-up comedian world. Comedy clubs, right? You know what they do there. Fuck boys. Hey, so after this, go look for um, Talking About Funny. And it's hosted by Ricky Gervais, who will throughout it act as if he's one of them but he's not. Uh, it's Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, and Louis C.K. And man, that is a really good hour if you're interested in comedy, jokes, and how the, how it all works. Yeah, some good stuff from Seinfeld there, talking about his craft, uh, how it works, what he did. He's only used the word... He only had one joke in his entire career that had uh, fucking... the fucking bat cave, or whatever it was. But you'll find it in there. That's a, that's a really good hour to sit down if you're a comedy geek. Uh, and I think people would have an appreciation for Jerry Seinfeld. Did you ever notice there was an episode of Seinfeld where, I think it's Elaine, she's talking to this uh, really old lady, and it's really boring, and then all, out of nowhere the old lady talks about how she was uh, Mahatma Gandhi's hot lover back when she was young. Well, I found out this funny trivia thing. In the show Seinfeld, his mom, the girl plays his mom, she was like fucking uh, James Dean's fucking hot sex lover back in the day. Like that. So anyway, you can, you're like, what? So I don't know if that inspired the uh, fictional version, but anyway, I thought that would, I'd mention. I'm doing observational humor for this one. You know, I don't, I'm not in, I will not sit down for more than 20 minutes of Jerry Seinfeld's stand-up. But I gotta tell you, that guy is, fucking deserves to be called one of the best living comedians. He really is that good at his craft. Hey, folks, did you, did you ever notice how many uh, pre, uh, priest raping kids jokes uh, stand-up comedians uh, like to make, and then but never seem to mention that uh, per capita, um, like Disney would have a much higher rate of pedophiles, um, and then stand-up comedy uh, has the most kid fuckers. Um, you know, stand-up comedians... You go see Bill Burr. Whoa, you better watch out. He might try to fuck your teenager. But that would actually be far, far more likely and realistic as stand-up comedians have easily, per capita, one of the highest kid fucker rates. Yeah, so next time you go to see Bill Burr, be careful taking your teenagers with you. You know what those stand-up comedians like to do to kids, right?